Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today I will read from a text by Irina Davidovici titled H, Hospital as City, published on issue number five of GTA papers devoted to social distance. H stands for hospital, a rectilinear sign pointing at once in four directions. It indicates a kind of systematic, non-hierarchical accessibility. The modern institution of the hospital calls a truce on race, gender and social class. It brackets most human lives at both ends, whatever their circumstances. In it, the membranes between the individual and society, between the body and the body politic, thin out. H embodies clinical efficiency. The institution of the hospital involves strict routines that depersonalize individuals, confining them to a hierarchy of doctors, staff, patients and visitors. Like the institutions of the army, prison or monastery, the hospital diminishes the external components that make up one's identity. Family, despite all efforts, becomes remote. Property, beyond a point, demonstrably irrelevant. At the same time, the temporary release from one's own obligations and the suspension of everyday life, however dramatic, allows space for reflection, for reckoning with oneself. A different set of codes takes over, the long corridors smelling of antiseptic, the relentlessly single beds, the ubiquity of white uniforms instill a universality amongst hospitals as much as a distinct barrier between those inside and outside of them. On the outside, however, hospitals differ greatly. Once stripped of iconographic pointers such as ambulances and uh, signage, hospitals become vaguely anonymously institutional, replicating other Western architectural types, from the convent and the palace of the penitentiary, the garden pavilion, the office building and the mall. Each of these types, geographical, political and social environments, imply a different kind of engagement with the public realm. There is no clear correspondence between hospitals' appearance and their use, which only becomes unambiguous once we are inside. As a result, their variegated architectures embody a set of shape-shifting perspectives upon the role of healthcare in public life. Their external appearance and attitude towards uh, their surroundings betray not only their actual age, but also the predominant ideologies regarding public health at the time of their design. Herzog and de Moron's hospital projects represent the latest development of an architectural genre that has been recently stagnating. In the last few decades, the design of healthcare facilities has become encumbered by programmatic complexity, onerous building standards, high liability and intense commodification. The result is that nowadays hospitals are almost exclusively the product of corporate expertise. So, when healthcare architectural historian Anne Marie Adams hailed the new projects of Herzog de Moron as a recoding of the modern hospital, she recognized that hospital innovation was coming from outside the narrow specialization of healthcare design and from an unexpected direction. The forays into the healthcare domain by Herzog and de Moron a global Pritzker Prize winning practice mainly associated with landmark large scale cultural venues such as the Tate Modern in London or the Elbe Philharmonie in Hamburg might come as a surprise. Still, Herzog and de Moron's claims upon this restricted market are fully consistent with the strategies that have historically propelled their development. Their projects question conventions and typological norms, uh, their success leading eventually to the formation of new conventions and new norms. Considering architecture's reorientation towards issues of social, urban and even more explicitly biopolitical relevance, Herzog and de Moron's new healthcare projects signal a shift in the mainstream architecture of hospitals. 
their recoding of the hospital occurs through a multi-layered engagement with its parallel histories. The history of the hospital as a building type, its architectural history as a genealogy of notable projects mixing utopia and pragmatism, and finally, the history of urban planning, itself profoundly shaped by the projection of health care concerns upon the public and private spaces of the city. In the case of Herzog and de Moron buildings, these interpenetrating histories are accompanied by the self-referential, consistent history of their own portfolio. Over four decades of activity, the office has constructed its own culture in which projects, details and strategies inform each other as part of a collective research in the formal, material, programmatic and symbolic qualities of architecture. How these projects talk to each other is apparent in Herzog and de Moron's healthcare projects, two of which are currently approaching completion in Switzerland and Denmark. Both the commissions for Zurich's Kinderspital, the Children's Hospital and the new North Zealand Hospital in Hillerod, Denmark, were awarded in competitions in 2011 to 2012 and 2013 to 2015 respectively. While responding to specific briefs uh, that impart strong characteristics, the two hospitals share a number of spatial and material strategies. Furthermore, both stem from the earlier radical prototype of the Rehab, Rehabilitation Center for Spinal Cord and Brain Injuries in Basel, Switzerland, won in competition in 1998 and completed in 2002. Their discussion here, together and apart, proposes a multifaceted understanding of emerging notions of health care in Herzog and de Moron's architecture. How these projects recode the modern hospital becomes apparent from their critique of mainstream health care architecture. The architects observed that the conventional layout of hospital buildings may give patients the impression that they are being shifted back and forth between departments that are separate and distinct and do not work together. In contrast, the large horizontal shape of the children's hospital seeks to highlight the holistic nature of the building and, by implication, of care. Rather than responding to the shape of the building plot, the volume was the result of a deliberate decision to maximize the building footprint and keep it low, unimposing and casual, while keeping it volumetrically unified. A similar principle was applied at the hospital in Hillerod, whose horizontality and curved forms were considered as an addition to the natural landscape. The architects have argued that a horizontal building is an appropriate building typology for a hospital because this fosters exchange. Across the various departments, the employees work on a shared goal, the healing of the ailing human being. In the history of hospitals as a type, this overall aim has often been overshadowed by the priority of procedural efficiency. Depending on context, hospitals have consistently borrowed from other building types, from military barracks and penitentiaries to palaces, parkland pavilions and office towers. Contemporary hospitals have become introverted, offering relatively little to their urban contexts, bogged down by complex standards and stymied by pressures to justify design decisions through evidence-based research. Against this wider context, Herzog and de Moron's recent healthcare projects set up an agenda of differentiation. They are primarily meant to neither look nor feel like hospitals. On the one hand, they resist the institutional introversion of hospitals, the labyrinthine blind corridors of uh, perplexing monotony, the unequivocal separation between the space of illness and the nominal normalcy of the outside. By contrast, the Children's Hospital and the NYT Hospital do everything to obliterate this distinction. Openness towards external views and the carefully varied landscaping of internal courtyards bring in daylight, facilitate orientation, soothe and distract. All procedures are intended to assist healing and alleviate alienation. 
By avoiding the formal replication of medical processes, as when the hospital becomes a volumetric extrusion of its function, these buildings offer a coherent, unified set of experiences. In other words, Herzog and de Moron recode the contemporary hospital by critiquing the accretive nature of the hospital as diagram and by rethinking buildings where each department is formally articulated as a separate entity. While seemingly informed by the horizontal typology of the MAT hospital, the projects reject this fundamental premise as a service spatial matrix for potentially infinite expansion. Instead, Herzog and de Moron's hospitals trace definite, site-specific figures within fixed boundaries. By keeping immovable structural elements to a minimum, the plans allow for a redistributive logic of adjacencies within one unified, clearly defined figure. Their interiors can be inhabited or hollowed out and reconfigured as required around the fixed elements of the structure, perimeter and light wells. Instead of a system, the hospital is envisaged as an environment. The aim is to provide not only a building, a room, a bed and specialized treatment for each ailing body, but also to stage and enhance the environment in which healing may occur. According to this ambition, the H no longer stands merely for hospital, but rather for a holistic understanding of care. Ask for this issue of GTA Papers at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video. Bye.